Hi everybody, this is Graham Blackburn and uh, this is traditional woodworking by hand and in this installment I'm going to be showing you how to sharpen a plane iron. This plane iron comes out of one of my smooth planes and the first thing to remember is that no matter what kind of sharpening stone you use you can't sharpen anything flatter than the plane sharpening stone itself. So I have here what's known as a water stone and it's fairly coarse grit, a thousand grit. So the first thing that I do is to make sure it's flat by rubbing it on a piece of abrasive paper that's on top of a piece of plate glass. Then I can put the stone in the holder, I give it a little water and picking this up carefully I hold it at an angle. Now I know that a lot of people will try and sell you all kinds of jigs to hold the plane iron itself but it's a little easier if you learn how to do it by hand. The bevel has been established so all I have to do is to make sure that the bevel is flat on the stone and you'll notice that I'm holding it at a bit of an angle. I just go backwards and forwards and I do this until I can see the scratches left by this stone on the bevel. When I, do, when I can see scratches left by this coarse stone all the way across it's time to move on, but not before I do a couple of other things. Because this is a plain iron for a smooth plane, I want it to be just very slightly curved so that when I use it, I don't get any sharp edges at the edge. And the way to do that is move my fingers to one side and take a few strokes like this. And you can see the metal that's coming off just on this side and then move my fingers to the other side and do the same thing and now you see the metal just comes off on this side. When that's done and I can see the scratches left by this stone all the way across the temptation is to rub your finger on the back to see if there's a burr but if you do that you'll break the burr off and you'll end up with a blunt edge so after you've done that simply lay it flat and wear the burr off. That's it. But every time I sharpen this, I also want to make sure that the cap iron, and we'll show you how we assemble this later, is also fitted perfectly. And that's easily done by putting that on the stone and remembering to hold it just a little lower than perfectly parallel. And just take a few strokes and you can see the metal that came off there and once again, wear the burr off, and that's done. Now I'm ready to move on to the next stone. So, just in the interest of efficiency, I'll clean the stone, and I'll give it a few strokes just to make it flat, ready to use for the next time, and then I can go from my 1000 grit stone to something a little finer, a 2000 grit stone. Once again, make sure that it's perfectly flat, put it in the holder, give it a little water, and now, if you remember, when I used the first stone, I held the blade at this angle, so that I could see the scratches. I need to do the same thing here, but I need to see the scratches left by this stone, so it's easier if I now turn this at an angle. And then I simply pressing only firmly enough, you can see I'm not holding the back of the blade, to make sure that the bevel is in contact, I move the blade backwards and forwards. And I do that until I can see the scratches left by this all the way across the bevel here, at which point I then repeat the process of rounding the blade ever so slightly by pressing down on first on one side and then pressing down on the other side 
and then wearing whatever bevel I may ever burr I may have made off by going backwards and forwards do that and then the same thing with the cap iron holding it a little lower than horizontal just a few strokes and then back and back and that's done clean this stone flatten it a few times just to make sure it's ready for use for the next time I need to sharpen something put it back in the box and now go to the final stone which is this is a, a 5000 grit stone so once again make sure that it's perfectly flat put it in the holder give it a little water and now remember the last time I used the blade this direction now I'm going to use it in this direction and just pressing down just firmly enough to make sure that the bevel is in contact with the stone if I press too hard I might dig into the stone that's no good I'll take a few strokes here and now if you look carefully you can see that the middle of the blade is shinier than the edges that's proof that what I did before by pressing first on one side and first on the other side has very slightly rounded the blade if you look at it like this I defy you to see that there is actually a curve but we're not talking about a big curve that's all you have to do so I can see that I've got the middle nice and shiny and now I go to first to this side and then I go to this side and I take a look and it's evenly shiny all the way across I wear the burr off the back and do the same thing with the cap iron holding it just a little lower than horizontal you can see the metal being worn off wear off its burr clean it wipe the stone dry give it a few rubs to make sure that it's ready for the next time and I'm finished with the stone but there's a couple more little tricks that I want to show you that will make things even better the first thing might look a little dangerous but I have never cut myself or seen anybody else cut myself I am now going to lap this on the heel of my hand and any minute little burr that might still be at the cutting edge that way gets worn off and not broken off and I do the same thing with this that's one little trick and then the last little trick is to use something called camellia oil which comes from Japan it's ground from camellia nuts and it has the wonderful property of both stopping things from rusting and because it's such a fine oil believe it or not the oil actually penetrates into the minute scratches left by that fine stone and makes the iron even sharper having done that now I get to reassemble the blade having taken so much care to make sure I got a nice edge I don't just want to bang things together so I carefully insert the cap iron in the hole and lifting it up so it doesn't touch I then place it all the way to the end and I don't want it to show any more iron than the thickness of the shaving that I want to take so if I want to take a thousandth of an inch shaving you can just barely see the edge of the shiny blade so tightening that up I then very carefully again reinsert it in the plane take the plane over to the wood and loosen this keep adjusting the depth till it takes a little shaving there we go and now see what we can do and there we have our perfect shaving 
no more than a thousandth of an inch thick in the middle and disappearing absolutely to nothing at either edge so that when you feel the wood you can't feel the edges of the shaving. That's it. So good luck with your, sh with your sharpening. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and look forward to the next installment. We'll show you something else about traditional woodworking. Thanks.